What is going on guys? Are you going to Coaster Mania this year? If you are, you clicked on the right video. I'm Miku from Miku Rides. In this video, you're going to know everything you need to know about Coaster Mania 2023. <laughs> Alright, so here we are on Cedar Point's website at the Coaster Mania page. Also, I apologize for the audio if it sounds bad or whatever, or if anything else is bad in the video, as I'm just getting back on YouTube and trying to figure it out. Also, please leave any tips for me in the comments, as I just want to make this content as best as possible for you guys, and just make entertaining stuff. But anyway, we're on Cedar Point's website for Coaster Mania, and first thing, the date is June 2nd, 2023. You can check your calendars. One problem that I found out for me is that I might, I don't, I figured out that I don't, but I thought that I had finals on that day, so that would have been a big issue for me. So if you're in high school, check that if you have finals or not, because that could conflict with the schedule of the day. But for most people at home, my school gets out later, but check your calendar, make sure you have nothing going on that day. And then here's a description of Coaster Mania. Roller coasters are king at Cedar Point, and Coaster Mania is the party that celebrates them all. This special event is our annual gathering for Coaster fans from all around the world. Enjoy exclusive ride time on several rides in the early morning before the park opens, a delicious dinner, make every cruise around America's roller coast, the Q&A session, even more ERT at the park closes. They say they're extremely limited this year. We'll see how many they sell. Tony Clark said that they were extremely limited. I'll probably put up a tweet on screen. But anyway, mission policies right here. So anyone can go. It's not a specific coaster club you have to be in. It, no, it was a few years ago. I think they ditched that last last year or the year before. I'm not sure. I don't really remember. But so you don't have to, be in, have to be in a coaster club, and you must have park admission. So if you don't have a season pass, and when you bought your tickets, if you didn't buy the one that includes admission, then you're gonna have to buy admission too. And you must purchase in advance. We already know they're sold out. So all this stuff right here. And the big thing is check-in, you have to arrive from 7 to 10. If you arrive after 10 o'clock, then you don't get to participate in the event because you just won't be able to hold items and transfer stuff. And really, that's what they say on the website. So you have to come in before 10, between 7 and 10 o'clock, three-hour window. Shouldn't be an issue for anyone who plans time, so make sure you plan when you're going to leave and stuff in the morning. And you have to come in through the main gate. You can't come in through the magnet gate, which I know a lot of people like to do. And... The Valerie's Gate, I don't think many people really go through that gate anyway, but you can't go through there. Here, right here, here's the itinerary. So, 7 a.m. check-in, we already talked about that. The main gate will open at 7.30, so that's where you'll be able to go through and start enjoying the park. And the first ERT starts at 8 a.m. and goes through 9 a.m. That will be Wild Mouse, Gatekeeper, Matterhorn, Troika, and Tom Scrambler. So if you get there when the park opens, you'll get to be able to explore the boardwalk and ride all the rides in the boardwalk before Millennium Force is here at 8.30 to 10 a.m. This is going to be the big ERT in the morning. It's going to see the one to get done. It's only in force. It's been to Cedar Point. If you go to Cedar Point a lot, you always know it usually has steady 45 to an hour wait. And plus, they usually get some fade with fast lanes. But in ERT, there will be no fast lanes, so the line will always move faster. That's one thing I experienced last year. The line just flew on every ride. So you're going to want to make it for Millennium Force. So when I'd recommend getting to the park, I would recommend getting there maybe around... You don't have to get there for all of the ERT for the boardwalk, but I'd recommend... Getting into the parking lot at 7.30 and then just checking into the park, trying to get into the park by 7.45 so you can walk around a bit, go to the bathroom if you need to, and maybe check out Wild Mouse and Gatekeeper if you want to get the credit, or explore the boardwalk, but you, I may recommend you be here for Millennium Force. And then 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. is Raptor Blue Streak and Valraven, but most people will not even be there. So if, I guess if you're a big Raptor, Valraven, or Blue Streak fan, you're just going to get to walk on because everyone's going to be at Millennium Force. And then... Here's one big change that they made this year. 10 a.m. through 12 p.m. is souvenir distribution. They'll announce it at the event, so you basically get to pick it up anytime from 10, 10 to 12. But basically, one thing they changed is that they always give a t-shirt. They've got they've given out a t-shirt for years. This year, they're not giving out a t-shirt. They're giving out one of the posters. So if you know, if you follow Cedar Point, they'll always post new merch drops, and a lot of those are posters created by this company made to thrill. And they always have these really cool designs. However, if you're used to your t-shirts and you want another t-shirt, you're out of luck. It's a poster this year. So it might be a little inconvenient for some people because most people won't want to carry it around. You just have to walk back to your car most of the time, unless it's small enough to fit in a locker. But I'd recommend bringing it back to your car just to make it easier. And 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. is the cruise. Cruise tickets still be distributed in the morning. You'll get your time and then you have to board outside the Valraven gate. This is optional. You don't have to do this. I mean, everything on here is optional. You don't have to do anything on the itinerary, except for arrive before 7.10, but if you don't do anything on the itinerary, I guess why'd you come? But 
here from one to three is the Millennium Force infield drop photo shoot area. I mean, it's not, what else is there to say? It's gonna be an awesome view from the bottom Millennium Force's drop. It's just gonna be an amazing photo op. I'll have some pictures up here from where chill out from some sort of pictures that you'll be able to get, but you don't have to arrive at one. It doesn't, you can just, it doesn't specifically start at one. You, you don't get cut off basically. But you can arrive between any time between one and three. Last for that would be two hours. I don't know what I don't know what happened in my math in my head there. But yeah, I'll put some pictures up on screen with some of the things you'll be able to get. And this ride's gonna be running at the same time. You're gonna be able to get even cooler photo opportunities for when the trains are passing by. I apologize for my voice is stuttering. I'm just not as used to being in front of a or just being on a mic. But so I apologize for that. But. Then you're gonna get dinner at 5.30 to 7 p.m. This is gonna be, I think, Lakeside Pavilion. Yeah, that's that's not the Grand Pavilion, I'm stupid. Lakeside Pavilion, I'm pretty sure this is the same place where if you went to Winter Chill Out where you ate lunch at Winter Chill Out, I'm pretty sure this is the same place. So 5.37, free dinner. You're not gonna have, you're not gonna be able to use your meal plan, you're not gonna have to pay for anything, so that's all included. And then there's a Q&A session right after dinner. This also is not mandatory, you can go if you want. I'd recommend going just because it'd be fun. You don't really know what they're going to say in there, what new things are going to announce because the Q&A session, a chill out, they announced some other things that they didn't really say was going to be. They said it was a Q&A. They just gave a slideshow. I'd recommend going because it's really cool. And then, sorry, my screen didn't there. It's not touching. It's not. 10 to 11 p.m. You have ERT on the kitty credits. So if you want to get the kitty credits, go get them. Night rise on Wilderness Run, I guess. But... <laughs> Magnum is going to be the big one because they're most likely going to be running it trimless. I wasn't here in time for Magnum ERT last year, so I don't know if they're running it trimless. I assume they were because there would be no point in them not to. So I would recommend getting to Magnum a little early because you know all the enthusiasts can get there and just try to get the magic seat. So I would recommend just waiting line for the magic seat because not very often you're going to get a trimless night ride on Magnum. And then the main event, which I think is just going to be the best part of the day by far, 10.30 to midnight, you have Steel Vengeance and Maverick. So you have just a whole hour and a half of just marathoning Steel Vengeance and Maverick night rides. And they don't trim. They don't trim Steel Vengeance at Coaster Mania, obviously. But, so yeah, that basically guarantees they're not going to trim Magnum. If they do that, just stink. Which I don't think they will. <laughs> but, yeah, Steel Vengeance and Maverick, that is going to be a very fun time. Especially if you're a night ride enthusiast, which most enthusiasts are. But, but it's custom made admission. They're sold out. So if you're watching this video and you didn't buy a ticket, I'm sorry. I out of luck for next year. I mean, not for next year. You're gonna have to allow, you're out of luck, and you're gonna have to get it for next year. So if you're looking for tickets for next year, just keep an eye on Tony Clark's Twitter account. He'll post them around this time next year. But that's that's a lot of advance. We're just gonna go over here. They have packages if you're gonna stay overnight. Which if you're coming from out of town. I would recommend. So if you're not from like the Detroit or Cleveland area or Toledo or anywhere close to Cedar Point, maybe within like an hour, hour and a half away, I would recommend staying at a hotel. They have the Express Hotel, Hotel Breakers, and Lighthouse Point. I would definitely recommend it just to save the hassle because if you're going to be staying to midnight, which you're going to want to be doing for Steel Avengers and Maverick, and if you have to drive a little over like two, two hours to get home, I just, I would not recommend it. Just way easier. Just drive back in the morning. Or you can even stay the night before so you can get there bright and early for all the ERT. But I would say if you're coming from out of town, um, something that probably is a must would be staying at a hotel just to keep things easy. You don't have to be driving at 2 in the morning. <laughs> That'd kind of stink. So you can do Express Hotel, Hotel Breakers, or Lighthouse Point. You can do whichever one you want. It doesn't really matter. Hotel Breakers is obviously going to be closer. And they said earlier that if you're staying at Hotel Breakers in here, you can take a shuttle to the main gate, which is very nice. So I would recommend picking up one of the special overnight rates. I don't know if these are if these are cheaper than regular. So I don't really stay at the hotel, but I would recommend doing it. Yeah, I don't really know because I only stay. I've never stayed at the hotel. I live like an hour away from Cedar Point. So I would, yeah, I'm not gonna say it again because I've said it many times. But overall, I think it's gonna be a very fun event. Hope to see a lot of you guys there. There's, no, uh, there's a lot of people that are planning to meet up. So if you see me there, then say hi. That'll be fun. Well, some tips I would recommend doing is during the day, you don't really have to ride 
coasters as much. You can just more enjoy the park and go about your day. Maybe do some of the upcharge attractions if you want to pay the extra money. Like when I went last year, me and my friends, we did the Frontier Fling, we did the Sky Coaster so much and we had so much fun doing it. I would recommend doing that. Enjoying the park because you're not really going to be waiting until we, you're not really going to be waiting in a long line in the ends of the days when you're going to be ERT. So if, if you want to get more rides in during the day, go for it. Be my guest. You have all day just to do whatever you want. So it can be a very fun event. Hope to see you guys. So, oh my gosh, can't speak. Sorry. Okay. Hope to see some of you guys there. And it's going to be a very fun day. See you guys.